21. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 21. If you have it, would you kindly stand in honor of the Word of God? Mm -hmm. And daddy 
afraid of people. Mm -hmm. I don't care about somebody taking my job. If you think you can do a better job at preaching tonight, you're most welcome to come take the pulpit. <laughs> That's all that I'm afraid of. Because I believe that the more we put of ourselves into others, the greater will be the outreach and the demonstration of the love of God to others. Can I say that again? The more we put of ourselves into others and train them for the work of the ministry, the greater will be the outreach and the demonstration of the love of God to others. And greater will be the heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus gave us a wonderful, wonderful example of training others. You see, what he's talking about training, I'm talking about doing the work of Jesus. Yeah. This is just the introduction for the next 20 minutes. Jesus gave us a great example when he took his 12 disciples and he, in essence, said to them, watch me, learn, listen. Watch me. If you watch me, if you listen to me, you're going to learn what to do. Amen. And that's the way we must do it to build up the kingdom of God. Can I tell you tonight that it is not your little kingdom. It's not my little kingdom. It's the kingdom of our God. Amen. Word of God tells us that the ultimate of God is this, that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God is Christ. And I want to tell you tonight that when the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of his Christ, I am one person who plan on being there and reigning and ruling with him. Are you still with me? If we continue the work that Jesus Christ began, we will not continue it in greater quality. But Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do. And I remember that there was quite a controversy for a long time over how in the world can you do Greater works. Greater works than things shall you do. You cannot do a greater work than leading a soul into the kingdom. You can't do a greater work than raising the dead. You can't do a greater work than watch somebody get out of a wheelchair and walk. You especially can't do a greater work than what somebody who is leprous suddenly have new flesh grow out on them and new limbs in place of the ones that were rotted away. I want to tell you tonight that you cannot do greater work in quality, but you can do greater work in quantity. And that's what Jesus was talking about. He never traveled about 50 miles away from the place that he was born and the place where he grew up. But today, in a matter of a few hours, we can travel around the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and see souls coming to the kingdom of God, greater in quantity. And today, we are seeing it happen. Well, I'm going to get rid of this microphone. Thank you. That's better. Our text that we read reveals five things that have to happen before a greater works ministry could take place. If you have pen and paper, feel free. 
free to write them down, and when you get home, look them up. The Bible tells us that we should search the scriptures. So I would encourage you to search the scriptures and to see tonight whether those things are so. One, in verse 12, they have to believe on the Son of God. Note what Jesus said. He that believeth on me. Second thing, they had to use his name. In verse 13, he said, Whatever you ask in my name, use the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid to use his name. He said in the 15th chapter of John, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you have the same power and you have the same authority that Jesus had when he walked on earth. He walked in the power and the demonstration of the Spirit of God. And you can walk in that same power and that same demonstration today because Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. They had to keep his commandments. In the 15th verse, he said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That means whatever he says about to you, do it. Yeah. That does not mean, however, that you have to run around saying, God told me this and God told me that. God told me the other thing because 90% of it, God never even told you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. God told me what to have for breakfast this morning. Ah, fooly. God told me to get in my car and to drive up and have lunch at Ponderosa. <laughs> ah. God told me I was supposed to go over and talk to Sister So and So. It is a possibility, but slim. Mm -hmm. You know what God's going to tell you? Can I tell you what God's going to tell you? Yeah. Read the book. Yeah. Read the book. But in the book, you have words of eternal life. Yeah. Read the book. If you read the little book, you're not going to talk about somebody else. Read the book. If you read the book, you're going to pray a little more. Read the book. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Thou shalt not covet. <laughs> you know what covet really is? Covet is really to lust. You don't know, lust after somebody you're not supposed to have. Can, can I, can I, why, I'm, I'm not into the message. No, 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 this is still introduction, introduction. Give, give me, give me, give me, give me some time. Some people don't like me, I don't, I don't care less. I can pass that kind of stuff. You, 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 you want to go out and you want to see somebody who's a, I don't know what the perfect number is anymore. <laughs> 36, 24, 36. She doesn't know either. <laughs> Pastor's not here, I've got to turn around to you. <laughs>
There is nothing that says that you can't admire beauty. But what the Word of God is talking about is don't keep your eyes on her too long, mister. When you take your eyes off of her, you keep your mind off of her too, mister. Because here's what happens. You look and you hold the attention. Can, can, she, can I use her all right as a, as a demonstration, as an illustration tonight? Yes, I can. She's saying no. They only have the congregation can see us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My wife is sitting down there. So. <laughs> oh, uh, let's let everybody. <laughs> because I don't want you getting any ideas on this, so get your mind out of that car. Casting down wicked imaginations. <laughs> Is that all right? This is somebody else's wife, okay? Somebody else's wife. She's not my wife. All right? My wife is down there, and she's the most beautiful thing in the world. All right? Now, I know that he would say exactly the same thing about his wife, okay? She's... <laughs> Did you hear what she said? <laughs> All right? The Bible says you're not to covet. Now Jesus said, he who looks at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. The outward act has not been done. And somebody may not know it. People may not, may not even realize that you have already committed adultery. But just in the eyes of God, it's just as if you already did it already. And what you actually do outwardly is only the result of what you have already done inwardly. Hmm? You already committed the sin. You just put in actions to it, that's all. And so there's nothing wrong with da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm not done with this one yet. <laughs> See, there's nothing wrong with standing up and you can admire beauty. And God's creation is beautiful. Amen. I'm about to say amen, huh? All right. <laughs> God's creation is beautiful. You can admire beauty. And this not only goes for the men toward the ladies, this also goes in the other direction. Yeah. Ladies to the men as well. I've heard some women. I would repeat some things they said about me. And how they felt about them. I wouldn't repeat it. But here's what happens. You can admire the beauty. She goes on by. And you don't follow her with your eyes? You don't even think about her anymore? She's gone? Get your mind out of there? Get your thoughts out of there and cast down every wicked imagination. Thou shalt not Covet another man's wife or his family or his car or his house or his cattle. Don't lust after it. Amen. Because if you begin to dwell upon it, you will go after it. And I want to tell you tonight that that is. Sin. There's an old song.
saying that it doesn't work for me anymore. It may have a few years ago worked for me. Some of the men around here have worked for. You can't stop a bird from pitching in your head. <laughs> But you can stop it from making a nest. Uh huh. You can't stop a thought from racing through your mind. But you can replace it with the Word of God and stop it from staying there where you dwell on it and it becomes sin in your life. Keep my commandments if you love me. Well, you say you've been a long time in that one. I told you, I think at 10 o'clock tonight. This is, this is not even an introduction. I've got a pretty introduction here. Verse 16, they have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Notice what he said. The Father will give you another comforter. I, I'm your comforter while I'm with you, but I'm leaving you, and the Father's going to send you another comforter. He's the one that's going to stay with you. He's not only going to be with you, but he'll also be in you. Yeah. And in verse 20, the fifth thing that is revealed in this text is verse 20. They have to occupy their place in Christ. I think it was Paul that said we are seated together with him in heavenly places. Was it Paul or Peter? We're seated with him in heavenly places. And they had to occupy their place in Christ. Notice what he said. You shall know that you are in me and I am in you. And can I tell you tonight that whenever the disciples caught the impact of this revelation, great things began to happen. And whenever the church of Jesus Christ today catches the impact of this revelation, great things will again begin to happen. Amen or ouch. Here's some of the things that happened when they caught this revelation. Eleven of them received this initial message because you know that one had already committed suicide and went to hell. Eleven received the initial message of here. About 120 of the believers were brought into the kingdom message. And about 120 of them received an explosion of Pentecost in their souls. And with this explosion of Pentecost, I'm not talking about denominationalism. I'm talking about the experience of Pentecost. Because I would be so bold tonight as to tell you that Pentecostalism is not denominationalism. We have turned it into that. But it is not a denomination. Pentecostalism is an experience with God. When this explosion began, here's some of the things that happened in Acts chapter 2. 3,000 souls were saved. In chapter 3, the lame man was healed. In chapter 4, 5,000 were saved. In chapter, uh, or chapter 4, rather, 5,000 were saved. In chapter 5, Peter's shadow has went by the aura of the Spirit of God. Souls filled him. That they said his shadow passed over the sick and they were healed. In chapter 6, the Word of God increased. And the disciples again were multiplied. In chapter 7, stones, this needle was stoned. And the church began to be dispersed to various parts of the world. In chapter 8, Philip preached to the Ethiopian eunuch. Ah, oh, he took the message back to Ethiopia. In chapter 9, Saul of Tarsus is saved. And Dorcas is resurrected. 28 chapters that give us uh, the story of the Acts of the Apostles, uh, as we call it. But may I tell you, it is more than the Acts of the Apostles. 
It is the acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. And I want to tell you tonight that again, we are living in the 29th chapter and new things are being written about the book of Hallelujah to God. We are, we are, we are, we are in the 29th chapter of the book of Acts. And some wonderful things are happening. I said wonderful things are happening. We're talking about doing the works of Jesus. I said, I said, I said we're talking about doing the works. What are the works of Jesus? Can I tell you what they are? Jesus quoting from the book of Isaiah in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to, to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of the sight to the blind. He, 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 he sent me to them that are bruised to set them free. He sent me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the work of Jesus? Take note, if you would, in Matthew chapter 10, verses 6 through 8, Jesus is talking again, and as he said, And as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. What is the works of Jesus? I want to tell you that the first thing that Jesus emphasized was preaching the gospel. He put more priority on preaching the gospel than on any other thing. The Word of God teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21, by the foolishness of preaching, men are saved, those that believe, it pleased God. I want to tell you tonight that as good as the singing is, as good as the music is, we love it and we enjoy it, but there's something more by the foolishness of preaching, so they brought into the kingdom of God. You say, what is preaching? Is it simply standing behind the pulpit as you do and you speak forth the word? No, it goes far more than that. Preaching the gospel, this is a minute part of the ministry of preaching the gospel. Your life must be a living message of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Your life will preach the gospel to those around you every single day. You will either be a message to them that will turn them on to Christ, or you will be a message to them that will cause them to raise up a, a, a standard against it and put up a barrier that will say, I don't want any part of it. What are the other? Frankly, the way I hear some folk talk and the way I see people live, I would want to be a Christian. You tell me that you're a child of God and you chase after every skirt that comes your way. That is not Christian. To be a Christian is to be Christ-like. It is not to live in a country like Canada and say we are a Christian country. I want to tell you that Canada has been taken off the Christian country list and is no longer listed as a Christian country because this is not, because you are not a child of God until you live like Christ. To be a Christian is to live like Christ, act like Christ, talk like Christ, walk like Christ, and be thanks that there are too many that carry the name Christian, but still live like the devil. Don't die of me now. Paul instructed Timothy in the second book of Timothy, 
chapter 4 and verse 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, correct, exhort with all long suffering. And then we have some who want to mess around with the things of the world and turn around and say, Who do you think you are to judge me? Jesus said, By their fruit you shall know them. I don't care what kind of a name tag. I don't care how much you call yourself a child of God. If you don't have the fruit of love, the fruit of joy, the fruit of gentleness, the fruit of meekness, I want to tell you, if you don't have the fruit of kindness, you are not a child of God. By their fruits. I walked into one church where a preacher was preaching. I knew the pastor for years had preached there many times. Went to the pastor afterwards and said, Pastor, I want to tell you something. That man's a homosexual. The pastor said, That's impossible. Look at the gifts of the Spirit operating through him. The gifts can operate through him if he's living in a homosexuality. I've got news for you tonight. Jesus didn't say by their gifts you're going to know them. He said by their roots you're going to know them. I want to tell you tonight that the devil will quickly come alongside if you're looking for a manifestation and he'll present you with one. So many times why you've heard me say it over and over and over again. Don't chase after manifestation. Don't seek the hand of God. Seek the face of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, God will move. Yes, he will work miracles. Yes, he will perform signs and wonders, but so will the devil. So don't chase after those things because you just might be deceived. Seek his face. Get to know him now by getting into the book. I said by getting into the book, get to know God. Get on your prayer bones until you know that you have heard from heaven. Get on your knees and pray. And seek his face until you know in your heart that God has spoken to you. And that yes, you read, and your life is a living epistle, read and known of all men. Amen. That's what preaching the word, is, uh, word, word of God is all about. The second thing Jesus said about preaching or doing the works of Jesus is to cast out devils. Nobody's even possessed in Canada. I mean, that's all in dark Africa. I tell you, there's more demon possessed people in St. John yes. than you care to know that. Somebody said, I don't want that happening in this church. I don't want my children to see that. We attended a church several years ago where I was a church evangelist. They had beautiful, beautiful, beautiful musicians there. But ever so often, she would just black out and fall on the floor. No reason. She had all kinds of tests, and there's nothing wrong with her. Absolutely nothing wrong with her. My wife and I were away on the evangelistic field for about a month, and we came back home. 
That Sunday I was tired and I really didn't want to get involved in anything. We sat maybe four or five seats up from the back of the church. We had 800 people in church. Just four or five seats from the back and when the service was over, we'd go home. Didn't happen that way. That night, this little lady raised her hands, clapped her hands, played the music, the piano. That night, she fell over again. And somebody carried her out to the lady's room. She began to foam at the mouth. And they began to pray for her and the thing screamed, She's mine. I'm not coming out. No demon possession in Canada. It took some of them as they brought her back in church and literally began to drag her down the aisle as she's screaming. Or I should say it screaming. <coughs> She's mine, she's mine, she's mine. You're not having her, she's mine. I'm not coming out, she's mine. And they got her to the front of the church and the pastor called. So Brother Jenkins, Brother Bowers, and so many more of us that were involved in the ministry of the church. She was only a little thing, it may be your size. And it took five or six of them to hold her. She was so strong. And the thing is screaming with the bitter screams and the pastor said, I want everybody to pray. Some folks in church no doubt were terrified. They hadn't seen this. But they began to pray. Us that were involved in ministry gathered around her. We didn't lay hands on her. I want to tell you this tonight. Somebody's demon possessed. You don't run up to them and put your hands on them. You make sure that you have the mind of Christ. And if you're not prayed up, you leave it alone and you call on the pastor. Somebody who's prayed up, somebody who knows the mind of Christ, somebody who's experienced the touch of God, don't get involved with it unless you are absolutely sure that you can handle the thing. Yeah, that's right. Because I'm going to tell you tonight, the devil's a whole lot stronger than what you are. Right. He's not afraid of you. He will only be afraid of the Jesus Christ on the inside of you. You can't cast him out by yourself. No. That night we gathered around and she screamed in a bitter scream. I had never heard a scream like that in my life. Finally, I don't know how long, whether a half an hour or an hour, I wasn't looking at my time and there was no time to look at time. No. But finally, she was set free. Gloriously delivered. You see, going to church doesn't necessarily mean that you uh, are free. Teaching a Sunday school class does not necessarily mean that you're blood bought and ready for heaven. Even standing up behind the pulpit and preaching doesn't necessarily mean that you're blood bought and ready for heaven. Jesus said to cast out devils. I was into a church and I, I guess I have to. I don't usually tell you stories. But I was into a church in Sudbury, Ontario, having revival services. One night, our service finished a little earlier than the others down the street, and Pastor said, would you like to go down and see if they're still in? And I said, absolutely. We just came out of a powerful service. 
walked in, and when I walked in, the pastor walked up to me. I've never met the pastor before. Pastor walked up to me and said, Are you Brother Jenkins? I said, Yes, I am. Pastor said, I've got a demon possessed man over here. I want you to come pray. I've never been in the church. I didn't know the pastor. They didn't know me. But somehow they knew my name. And I never forget as I walked across towards the man, it was like you're going through water, and the water all opens up. And people begin to back away as I walked through, and they made it a walkway through the crowd of people. I don't know if they thought I was God or what. I looked at them and I said, stand back. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I said, nothing. I'm not about to go jumping into deep waters no. until I know the mind of Christ. Right. Right. So I said, stand back and pray. Keep your eyes off me. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You want to see this man free? They had him already sitting on a chair. Now I, I stood back for, for five or six minutes. I just stood there and I prayed, Oh God. If ever I need your help, I need it now. Yeah. I never left the service that was powerful for God where God had touched people and came into this one or something like this. I'd just go over and finish up the service with them. Worship a little bit. God, I need you now. About five or six minutes later, I finally felt a release in my spirit and I walked over to the man and I looked at him and I said, Sir, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to be free of every demonic spirit that has hindered you, that has bound you. And Satan, I command you to close your mouth. You are not permitted to speak and come out of the man. And instantly, the man was set free by the power of God. I've got news for you tonight. If he did it in the days as he walked the shores of Galilee, he has not changed. Hebrews 13, verse 8 tells us, and so he'll do it again. I said if he did it then, he'll do it again. But we have got to make sure that our life lines up with the word of God, and that we are praying help, and that we are in a position with him where we can do the works of Jesus Christ. Here's what he said in Luke chapter 9, and verse 1 says, Then he called his disciples to him, and he gave them authority over all devils and to cure all diseases. I've got news for you. That still works today. What does it mean to do the works of Jesus? The story is told of a woman that had a little dog. We know what that's like. We have it. Everywhere the woman went, the dog was sure to go. She took that little doggy with her everywhere. But one time she was going to the grocery store. And the doggy is not allowed in the grocery store. And so she began her journey. And she looked back. And Jack is on her heels. She said, Jack, you better go back in the house. You can't come to the grocery store with me. And she went on her way. A few more steps, and Jack is back on her heels. She said, Jack, I told you to go back to the house. You cannot go to the grocery store with me. And so Jack begins to scamper back, and she turned and she began to walk again. A few more steps, and the same thing happened. 
And she said the same thing to Jack, but a little more stern. And she began to walk to the store again, and as she's walking, all of a sudden, Jack is back on her heels. She turned around this time, and she looked at him, and she said, Jack, I told you to go back. And Jack left and went back home and didn't follow her anymore. Can I tell you tonight? You can't pat Satan on the head. And say, good boy, down now, down, just don't leave me, don't, don't, don't mess with me today, I'm having a bad day as it is. <laughs> I, I, I'm really not the mood. <laughs> so leave me alone, and the devil scampers back wherever he comes from. And, <laughs> and lets you alone. You know, we, 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 over the years, we have tried to treat the devil just like a little boy, bad boy. And there is Pam, does it. And if you treat him right, he'll leave you alone. I've got news for you. The only way he's going to leave you alone is when you take your authority over him that Jesus Christ has given to you. Because he said, in my name shall you cast out devils. You have the authority, and not because you speak in tongues either. <laughs> you know, Pentecostals are a weird bunch. They go to church, they clap, they get happy, they get excited. We gotta get everybody filled with the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues, so we get them talking in tongues with a name. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Everything that you got. I've got news for you. Let me bust your theological bubble. Just because you talk in tongues does not mean that you have it. I know some people that talk in tongues and lie. I know some people are talking tongues and go gambling and buy lot of tickets. Oh, gosh. Don't get mad at me, I'm not done yet. Can I tell you that you're buying lot of tickets, you need to give it up. It's a sin against God. You see, buying a in a million dollars. Wouldn't you like to have a million dollars? Of course I would. I've never had to take another salary like to preach the word of God all over the world. But God's people are not to be using God's money for unjust gain. The Bible says you're going to work to eat your bread. <laughs> you die on me, no, I hit somebody. <laughs> right between the eyes. Well, good enough for you. You want to profess that you know Jesus Christ? Start living like him. Amen. Trust him to be your provider and stop trusting the lotto machines. You, you, you just say, I thought you were going to preach on doing the works of Jesus. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm preaching on. You say, I, I got power in the name of Jesus. I've got the power in the name of the Lord. Yeah, right. Sing it will live like the devil. Amen. Well, I, where, where, else, where else should I go, sis? I've been into the women, and I've been into the men, and I've been telling them what to do, what not to do. And I've been... 
Now I'm into the laws. <laughs> you know your problem? You need to have the gambling devil cast out of you. Well, you know, it's just a little problem that I have. <laughs> Wouldn't you, if, if, if I won a million dollars and I bought you the top, wouldn't you take it? Come 
coming from the north and they're coming from the south. And I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up with the Lord. You know that? Tell you know that. She can't play for me to sing the right key. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people that sing it with their mouth, when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rises, and those who are alive and remain that are in tune with the Spirit of God, I want to tell you there are some that sing it that's going to be left standing on the ground like a piece of lead and wondering what <laughs> I've got news for you. It's time to start living according to the Word of God. It's precept upon precept. It's line upon line. I want to tell you, it is not paragraph by paragraph, but it's line up on line. It's word by word. It's the word of God. And we better start listening to the word of God. Well, I, I, I'm going to finish one more. I'm going to finish one more in a minute, but she's going to sing that for me first. Pastor, 
it could, it could come to torture preaching. He doesn't have anything else to do except. I want to tell you something that I've gone totally crazy. But I began to have some services in the parsonage. And we would gather around 14, 15 people and begin to train them and teach them. And when it came time for somebody to pray for, for somebody who had a sickness, I said, I'm not praying for you. And they first looked at me like I had two heads. Now, I'm not going to pray for you. Somebody else is going to. And I would point out somebody and say, you pray for this one. And they would pray and see God work a miracle. And I remember one day I had some problems with their ears. And I said, you. I, I mean, a lady that was a Baptist lady. I, I, I tell you, the apple of the Holy Ghost, but she's Baptist. And, and see, this was a Baptist church. 80% of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. The other 20% were filled with the Holy Ghost and just didn't talk in tongues. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I mean, they had no idea why hit that church. They're dancing in the spirit all over the place. They're falling on the floor in the Baptist church. They're shouting glory in the Baptist church. I've got news for you. God doesn't care who it is. He's going to move wherever hungry hearts are. Yes. So I remember I told this lady, I said, you stick your fingers in that man's ears and you pray and watch what God says. I can't do that. I said, you don't do it because I'm not. I said, I told you I'm going to train you so you can do the works of Jesus. And she put her fingers in his ears and all the rest of us did was agree with her. And she prayed and she commanded the thing to open. And suddenly he could hear perfectly. I've got news for you. God will use you when you're filled with his spirit. He doesn't say you've got to talk in tongues. He said be filled with the spirit. Hallelujah. Woo! Are you sure you church of God preacher? Yeah, man. Oh. <laughs> uh. Heal the sick. I believe that believers should be able to pray for the sick and see them recover. It does not necessarily mean that there will be instantaneous miracles all the time that you pray. That's not what James said. Sometimes there will be instant miracles. Other times there will be recovery, which indicates it takes time to heal. If you cut yourself with a knife or something and you put some salve on it and it's an ointment and put a bandage up on it, it takes some time for it to heal, but it will heal. The same is true in the spiritual realm. Sometimes you pray and you watch. You don't doubt God because the miracle didn't take place. You pray for God to heal. And that's what God is going to heal. It may, it may, it may take a week. It may take a month. But God is working the miracle from the inside out. And it takes place. I've got news for you. God's people should be doing that. That's doing the works of Jesus. James chapter 5 verse 15 says this. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise them up. Can I tell you? This has been a, a doctrine really that's been ridiculed so much. People are afraid to lay hands on somebody. It just might be that somebody won't get well. Well, it just might be that somebody you pray for to get saved don't get saved either, but do you stop praying for people to get saved? Then why on earth would you pray for them? Stop praying for people to get well. Hello? Well, I think you, you know, you don't understand. It's not God's will to heal another body. children's brain. Pull your chair up to the table and begin to partake of the healing that's on the table of God. It is your bread. Eat a little bit tonight. Let's do the works of Jesus. We have been given the power. I said we've been given the power. We need to utilize the power of God. Not for our own benefits. 
but for the benefit of others. Did you hear what I said? Not for our own benefit. See, I believe that God wants his people to take back from the enemy what has been stolen from them. I believe that God wants his people to stand up and not be afraid to speak words of faith over people. I believe that God wants his people to stand up and to say, listen, devil, back down because Jesus Christ is marching into this sea. You might not like it, mister. You might think you can tear me down. You might think you can ridicule me. You might think you can destroy me. But oh, my elder brother is coming by and he's going to put you to shame. I've got news for you tonight. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. His name is Jesus. Say his name is Jesus. Say his name is Jesus. It's time for God's people to rise up and be counted worthy to stay. Do the works of Jesus. Do the works. Would you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. 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 Lord God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the time that you have given us to share together. I thank you because your word is being the drink to our spirits. <laughs> Father, tonight I thank you for those of your children that will determine from here on in that they're going to work the works of Jesus. They're not going to run all over the place, hopping and skipping and jumping, hither and thither and young, but they're going to stand with the vision of the church. And they're going to pray, they're going to believe God, they're going to seek the face of God until they know within themselves that they are absolutely right with God. And then they're going to work the works of God to bring souls into the kingdom of God, casting out evil spirits, casting out everything that is not like you, casting down wicked imaginations. Father, rising up to walk in the power, in the newness of life, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I give you praise in Jesus' name. Every single one tonight that you say, preacher, I know what you're talking about. I have been afraid. I've been afraid to pray for people. But I need prayer tonight. I want the fear to be gone because I want to work the works of Jesus. You're here tonight and you say, preacher, I have no idea. I didn't know that's the way it's supposed to be. I, I'm just not sure about it. But tonight, I want to make sure. And I want to begin to do what God wants me to do. I want to pray with you. You're here tonight. You say, listen. I just don't really agree. You know something? You need to get out of your seat and get to the altar. Because what I'm giving you is the word of God. Now I'm praying with you. You're here tonight, you're not sure you're ready to meet Jesus when he comes. Most important thing in the world. We just say, I want to be sure. I want to be certain that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to be absolutely positive that I'm ready to meet Jesus. I want to pray with you. And maybe others that I've not even touched. But I'm going to ask you to get any seat and come. Come on. I know there's some here. Would you say this? She begins to sing, I want you to come.